Modeling, an extremely glamorized aspect of the fashion industry. At first glance, becoming a model may seem harmless and just an amazing job that will get you fame and riches. But as you start to look closer, you may find that it's not at all that glamorous. I'm not going to go into the, in the history of the mat modeling industry itself. I'm actually going to fast forward to the late 90s to the early 2000s when the Victoria's Secret fashion show started up and a lot of young girls wanted to be like the women or angels as they were called that they were seeing on TV. The show started up in 1995. Originally, the show wasn't very extravagant. It was actually very simple, but at the same time, very popular. It was also a very high profile event. In 1999, when VS announced the 72-hour webcast countdown of their fashion show, it led to them having over 2 million viewers. The show featured Tyra Banks, Letitia Costa, Heidi Klum, Gisele Bündchen, and Adriana Lima. The show was also broadcast online in 1999 and 2000. However, in 2001, it was broadcasted on television on ABC. In 2004, the show was canceled because of an incident at the Super Bowl involving a wardrobe malfunction that resulted in an accidental indecency. So instead, Victoria's Secret actually sent some of its most popular angels like Tyra Banks, Heidi Klum, Giselle Bündchen, Adriana Lima, and Alessandra Ambrosio on a tour. It was called the Angels Across America Tour. They toured through four cities like New York City, Miami, Las Vegas, and Los Angeles. There's not really much to say about this tour because really all the models did was promote the brand, but from what I could tell, this tour was very popular and was probably iconic at the time. In 2005, one of the best Victoria's Secret runway shows was held in New York City. Victoria's Secret at this point had a huge influence on teen girls and these girls wanted to look exactly how the models did. <laughs> Now, if it isn't obvious, many of these models that these girls idolized and wanted to look like had pretty bad eating problems. Like, really, really bad. They were constantly told to lose weight and they pretty much did anything they could to keep the pounds off. Some, some starved themselves or did substances to stay in shape. Bridget Malcolm was even told to have tons of intimacy just to stay in shape when she was a minor. In the 2000s, a lot of girls had eating problems, mainly because of the things that they were exposed to in pretty much any form of media. Even the clothes that were popular at the time really only catered to people with skinnier bodies. Dieting culture was so bad at the time, and many models themselves had terrible eating problems. I don't think people realize how thin you have to be to work as a model. Some female models them actually lost their menstrual cycle because of these eating habits. Bridget Malcolm actually spoke about this in an article with Fox News. He said, and I quote, At the start of 2017, it took me 10 minutes to climb a flight of stairs. I reached the top and I just had that awful hollow feeling like this is what the rest of my life is going to look like if I don't do something about it now. The longest I managed to go without eating was three days and I had to quit because I kept on falling unconscious. I was annoyed with myself because I was determined to make it to five days, but I couldn't. I couldn't function. I couldn't move. I was incredibly frustrated. I remember being so angry with myself and feeling as though I had somewhat failed at not being able to survive on water for that long. Now, there's a lot more in this article that I can't say in this video, but if, if you want to check it out, let me know and I'll just link it down below. The scary part is, is that there were tons of teen girls who wanted to work for these companies and agencies and have the same types of bodies that these models had without knowing what they would be forced to do. Now, modeling agencies are extremely exploitive. I'm sure everyone thinks that if you become a model, you get paid a lot, but a lot of the time, companies will withhold your pay and some agencies will keep models in the dark about how much they're getting in order to keep a portion of their paycheck for themselves. Models lose thousands of dollars when companies do this and there's not much they can really do to get the money they deserve because they have no power and are usually punished when asking for transparency when it comes to work. I mean, when it comes to their pay. Models are considered freelance workers, so there's not really any benefits for them, and these agencies have no regulations, so basically they can just do what they want. Sometimes models don't even get paid in actual money, they get, pay they get paid in material items like clothes and accessories, and accessories, which by the way is kind of a bad way to get paid considering you can't pay rent with a pair of expensive sunglasses and you can't buy food with an expensive pair of shoes. 
In an article with Fast Company, Sarah Ziff said, People have heard stories of Linda Evangelista saying she wouldn't get out of bed for less than $10,000 a day. In reality, the vast majority of working models are not making large sums of money. In many cases, they're young immigrant women. Many are actually working in debt to their agencies. They are among the least protected workers in the world. Sometimes agencies will tell models that their expenses will be covered, but after the job is done, the expenses will be deducted from their paychecks. Also, runway models don't usually get paid a lot unless they're really well known. Commercial modeling actually pays better than runway modeling if you're just starting out. There's also tons of links that the modeling industry has with very, very questionable people. But I can't really talk about that on here, so um, you're just going to have to look it up on your own. Another major problem that the industry has is, surprise, surprise, racism. The industry has models like Naomi Campbell and Tyra Banks who are black women and have made it big in the industry despite their race. But there are still major issues and prejudice that black models face in the industry. When a black model is getting ready for a shoot or a runway, sometimes they have to bring their own makeup or do their own hair because the hairstylists don't know how to work with their hair texture or the makeup artist does not carry their shade. In fact, many black models shave their head so they don't have to worry about their hair when getting ready for shoots. Supermodel Iman said, My first experience of racism was seeing the discrepancies in pay between white models and black models, she said on Naomi Campbell's Unfiltered Show. My rate was different to white girls. It was an unspoken rule. Luckily for Iman, after she went on strike, her agency started paying her the same as her white co-workers, but not every model is as lucky as she is, and I'm sure there are many facing a racial pay gap. Black models can miss out on a shoot or runway because of their race, because sometimes directors are told not to cast them. James Scully said that one time, a photographer once said to him, I don't film blacks. The fashion industry is dominated by white people, so it's very hard sometimes for POC to work and thrive in that industry. Okay, so this video was actually way shorter than I thought it was going to be. Um, and there's like, I could have gone way more in depth with some of the topics that I talked about, but there are things that I just can't say on here. But if you want to, you know, hear more about this, please let me know in the comments below and I will make a future video about it. Okay, so I just finished editing and I rewatched the whole video and I just realized how bad it is. But guys, I, you know, I put, I, I did try. This is my first video. So please have mercy on me. <laughs> but yeah, bye.